Okay, lesson 1.2.1a is the first in a series of about four lessons that are going to take a look at the colonial models of the Spanish, the Dutch, the French, and especially the English. The material we're going to reference in these lessons comes from a book called America, A Concise History. It was written by James Henretta, David Brody, and Lynn Dumanil. We're going to take a look at chapter 2 pages 38 through 41 and we're going to focus in this lesson on New Spain. The Spanish came to the Americas in the in a quest for gold. Spanish adventurers penetrated deeply into the southern and western United States. In the 1540s Francisco Vasquez de Coronado searched in vain for the fabled seven golden cities of Cibola. In the process, his men discovered the Grand Canyon in Arizona, the Pueblo Indians of New Mexico, and the grasslands of central Kansas. The references you'll see in yellow boxes with red outlines will be used to answer the questions in your notes. Take a moment now and go ahead and fill out the first question. About the same time as Coronado, Hernández Soto, with a force of about 600 adventurers, cut a bloody swath across the southeast. He met the Appalachians of the northern Florida and the Cusas of northern Alabama, but he found no gold and few other riches. By the 1560s, Spanish officials had given up the search for rich Indian peoples and focused on the defense of their existing empire. Roving English sea dogs were plundering Spanish treasure ships and Caribbean seaports. And French Protestants began to settle in Florida which was long claimed by Spain. Following King Philip II's order to cast out the trespassing Frenchmen, Frenchmen quote, by the best means, unquote, Spanish troops massacred 300 members of the, quote, evil Lutheran sect, unquote. To safeguard Florida, in 1565, Spain established a fort at St. Augustine, which became the first permanent European settlement in the, in the future United States. However, Indian raids wiped out a dozen other Spanish military outposts and religious missions, one as far north as the Chesapeake Bay. These military setbacks prompted the Spanish crown to adopt a new policy toward the Indian peoples. The Comprehensive Orders for New Discoveries, issued in 1573, placed the, quote, pacification, unquote, of new lands primarily in the hands of missionaries, not conquistadors. Franciscan friars promptly set up new missions among the settled agricultural pe Pueblo peoples visited by Coronado two generations before and named the area Nuevo Mexico, Although the friars often learned Indian languages, they systematically attacked the natives' culture. Protected by Spanish soldiers, missionaries whipped sexual sinners and smashed the Indians' religious idols. To win the allegiance of the Native Americans to the Christian God, they tried to impress them with rich vestments, gold crosses, silver chalices. For the Franciscans, religious conversion and cultural assimilation went hand in hand. They introduced the European practice of having men, instead of women, grow most of the crops and encouraged the Indians to talk, cook, dress, and walk like Spaniards. Moreover, they generally ignored Spanish laws intended to protect the native peoples from coerced labor. This neglect allowed privileged Spanish landowners 
encomenderos to collect tribute from the native population, both in goods and in forced labor. And the missions also depended on Indian workers who grew the crops and carried them to market, often on their backs. Native Americans initially tolerated the Franciscan rule out of fear of military reprisals or in hopes of learning their spiritual secrets. But when Christian prayers failed to protect their communities from European disease, drought, and raids by nomadic Apaches, many of the Pueblo people returned to their ancestral religions and blamed the Spanish rule for their ills. Thus, the people of Javiku refused to become, quote, wet heads, unquote, as the Indians called baptized Christians, quote, because with the water of baptism they would have to die, unquote. In 1598, the tense relations between Indians and Spaniards in New Mexico exploded into open warfare. An expedition of 500 soldiers and settlers led by Juan de Oñate seized corn and clothing from the Pueblo peoples and murdered or raped those who resisted. When Indians of the Acoma Pueblo killed 11 soldiers, the Spanish troops destroyed the Pueblo, killing 500 men, 300 women and children. Now faced by bitterly hostile Indian peoples, most of the settlers withdrew from New Mexico. However, in 1610, the Spanish returned, and they founded the town of Santa Fe. They reestablished the system of missions and forced labor. Over the next two generations, European disease, forced tribute, and raids by nomadic Navajos and Apaches threatened the Pueblo peoples with extinction. By 1680s, by the 1680, the population of the Pueblo peoples, which had once numbered 60,000, had declined to a mere 17,000. In desperation, the Indian shaman priest, Pope, led the peoples of two dozen Pueblos in a carefully coordinated rebellion that killed over 400 Spaniards. As the uprising continued, the Indians forced the remaining 2,000 Spanish colonists to flee 300 miles to El Paso. The Pueblo peoples desecrated churches, tortured and killed 21 missionaries. Reconquered 10 years later, the Indians rebelled again in 1696, only to be subdued. Exhausted by a generation of warfare, the Pueblo peoples agreed to a compromise that allowed them to practice their own religion and avoid forced labor. In return, they accepted a dependent position in New Mexico, joined with the Spanish to defend their settlements and farms against attacks by nomadic Indians. Spain had maintained its northern empire but had largely failed to achieve its goals of religious conversion and cultural assimilation. Taken aback by the military costs of expansion, Spanish officials delayed settlement of the distant region of California until the 1760s. For the time being, Florida and New Mexico stood as the defensive outposts of Spain's North American Empire. In our next lesson, we'll take a look at the approach that Fren the French and the Dutch took in settling in North America.